This week, we're going to talk about probably the most important element for me when it comes to editing your photos in Lightroom. We're going to talk about masking. This is super powerful. It's probably the quickest and most effective way of improving your edits. I use it, I would say, on every single photo that I edit at this point. So landscape, portrait, wildlife, street photography, food photography, whatever it is. I use masking all of the time. Lightroom has made it extremely easy to mask in all kinds of different ways. It is a very powerful tool. Enough about what it does. Let's talk about how to do it, how to get involved in it. It's tutorial to use, Dave. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each week you turn every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, like I said, we're diving into Lightroom and we are going to talk about masking. So let's dive in now and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we're going to look at a bunch of different photos. We're going to look at a bunch of different ways you can use this masking and how Lightroom makes it extremely easy for you to get the most out of this. This has really been updated over the years. There's loads of tools at your disposal to just make this oh, so easy, but so powerful. I really can't overstate how good this is. So we're going to start with this photo here. This is a photo we've got here in Lightroom Classic. We've done some very basic global edits and what that basically means is we've come over to the slides on the right, the curves adjustment, the color adjustment here, all that kind of stuff and we have just dialed in some small adjustments. Now when you do that it affects the whole photo, right? So if I reduce the highlights it's going to reduce the highlights in the whole photo. Same with the shadows, same with the curve adjustment, all that kind of stuff. It's going to affect everything in the photo. Whereas with masking, we can affect specific parts of the photo in different ways. So we can mask out different areas. We can then edit things like exposure there. We can edit color. I'm going to show you what we can do. So this photo, for example, I really like how moody this was. It was a difficult day to shoot because it was just very gray. But you know what? Down by the sea, it was actually pretty nice to go and shoot and take advantage of a bit of that mood. So how do we get to the masking panel? Well, up here on the right where we've got our different elements here like cropping, healing, stuff like that. Right on the right here, we've got masking. If we click on that, it opens the ability to add a new mask. And once we add that, you can see them a little bit like layers. And we've got different ways to apply a new mask. So the most sort of straightforward and simple ways to do this are things like a brush. Let's click on that for a second. That allows us to get a brush, which we can then adjust the size of just using the mouse scroll wheel and literally just brush onto the photo. Now, where everything is in red, that is where the mask is applied. And if I come over to the sliders now and adjust this, you can see that it is now just adjusting where I have brushed in. So where I've brushed in isn't very useful at all. No problem. We can press Control Z to undo the sliders. Control Z again will undo the brush. But that's one way of applying a mask. So for example, we could use the brush to, let's say, we want to brush onto these rocks. We just want the rocks. Nothing too crazy. We can, we can change how the brush is actually being used as well. So for example, we've got feather at 100. If I was to bring that down to zero, it makes it a much harsher edge. We can also adjust things like the flow. So if I bring the flow down to, let's say 35, it's going to build up more gradually. So when I paint on like that, it's going to paint on at essentially 35% opacity, but I can paint over it again to build it up. And you can see it gets a, a more, I guess, a deeper red the more we build that up. That's kind of a useful thing to be able to do because it does allow us to build up a mask and have it stronger in certain areas than other areas. So let's get rid of that. Let's just press Control Z a few times to get rid of that. I'm going to bring the feather back up. I'm going to bring the flow back up for now as well. And like I say, you can adjust the size with the mouse scroll wheel. And once we've done that, so we've painted here onto the rocks, we might want to then just bring the exposure up, maybe bring the clarity up a little bit. We want to bring out some detail in these rocks, right? That already looks, I think, generally quite a bit better. Now you can see we've now got this new panel up here in the top right, which shows all of our masks that we're applying to the photo. So you can see here, we've got mask one. You could double click that to actually rename it. So I'm going to rename this rock mask. And you can see that we've got that here. If you click onto it, you can see that we've used a brush to do that. If you mouse over that little icon there, it'll show you in red where you've brushed that on. That's really useful. You can add to that overall rock mask by clicking add. 
adding a new type of mask. It'll add to that with the same settings, or you can subtract from it as well. So again, that's exactly the same, but just removing the mask from certain areas. And if you ever want to be able to see the mask, you can just press O on your keyboard to bring up the kind of overlay of where that is. Let's press O again to get rid of that. But for now, we're going to go ahead and create a new mask. Now there's loads of different things we can do here, but what I'm going to do now is click Select Sky. And this is one of the really useful things that Lightroom has available. If we just click Select Sky, Lightroom is going to instantly, pretty much, work out where the sky is and mask that out for us. Again, you can see in red, we've now got the sky selected. We didn't really have to do anything to be able to do that. Now in the past, you'd have to fiddle around, you have to do a bunch of stuff to get the sky. Now Lightroom just does it for you. Super easy. So there's loads of stuff we can do there. We could bring the exposure down a little bit, maybe, maybe make it a little bit moodier. Come down here, maybe maybe put a little bit of dehaze on there. Just really lean into that moody feel. Maybe a little bit of clarity. Look at that. So look at that sky now. That's looking very different. If we click and hold on this little eye icon, that's what the sky looked like before. That's what it looks like now. So again, let's go ahead and rename this mask, Sky Mask. Now we've got Rock Mask and Sky Mask. I'm pretty excited. This is, this is feeling... This is feeling pretty good, actually, to be honest with you. Now, there's loads more that we can do. So, for example, let's go create new mask. Let's go radial gradient. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a circle that we're going to draw. So we click and hold and drag. And you can draw a circle of any kind of shape or size like that. Let's just bring that out. Let's do something like this. And what I want to do is actually just bring the exposure up across the middle of this photo here. I want to do something, something like this because I want to make sure that our kind of subject here, I don't know what this is. If you know what this is, pop it down in the comments, but because I'm always interested actually, what is this? I have no idea. I've seen it so many times. I have no idea what it is, but this is kind of our subject here. So we want to just make sure that that's kind of the brightest area of the photo. And again, we can come up here. Let's turn that off, turn that back on. I really like that. Let's add another mask in here, create a new mask. Let's go linear gradient. Now, again, this is kind of similar to the radial gradient, but this time we're dragging it on a little bit like this. The, the further we drag it, the more kind of feathered it's going to be. You can adjust all of these afterwards as well. So I'm going to bring that in like that. I want to bring that down from the sky. And what I want to do is actually darken the top part of the sky like that. So I'm going to bring the exposure down. And I might even come down and up that dehaze. I'm going a little bit harder than I normally would. But I think I want to, I want to really lean into the mood of that. I mean, look at that now. So combining that with the sky mask that we had before, let's turn this one off. Lovely. And then back on, turning that middle kind of section off that we've added in, a bit of exposure. Lovely. Okay, I'm going to name Mask 2, Sky Mask 2, Linear Gradient. Lovely. And I'm going to name Mask 1 here, double click, Radial Gradient Center. Right? Lovely. Now, you can see what this looks like with all the masks turned off by coming up to the top of this masking panel here and just clicking and holding on this eye icon next to where it says mask. So without any mask at all, this is what it looks like. With them on and with them off. Look at the difference there. That is wild. We have made such a massive difference to the photo by editing things locally. Look at the rocks, the way they pop now, the way the sky looks super moody is really interesting. But let's move on to another photo so I can show you more ways that we can use this because this is just one landscape photo, but there's so much that we can do with masking. So this is a photo of my dog Nala. And as you can see, I've done some very sort of basic global edits. So I've adjusted certain things on the photo, but realistically, I'm at a point where I'm now going to start using masks. And there's loads of stuff that we can do with the masks. So here, we're going to go up to the masking panel again. And this time, we're going to select subject. So add new mask. We're going to go subject. Let's click that. Lightroom's going to work out where the subject is and mask her out perfectly. I mean, look at this. It's so good. Again, you, had to, you used to have to fiddle around so much with like a brush, brush that on. It's a whole thing. Now, it's so good. And this is such a useful tool to have. So what we can do now is actually just bump maybe the exposure up a little bit. We can maybe bring the shadows up a touch as well. We could bring stuff like the clarity up as well, but for now, I'm not really going to do that. There's lots of things we could do kind of conversely to this. So if we come up to create new mask, we could actually go select background, right? That's going to select everything except the subject. So if I wanted to do that, I could then bring the exposure down to really make her pop. 
I'm not going to do that in this occasion, but it's a useful thing to have available to you. Now, if you want to get rid of a mask, like I want to get rid of this one, we can come over to these three dots here and just go delete mask two. Lovely. So what am I going to do next? Well, now we're going to do something a little bit more involved. I want to brighten this side of her, right? The sun is clearly on the right. I want to brighten her left side because that's where her face is kind of facing. We want to make sure that's kind of brighter. So I'm going to go linear gradient and I'm going to bring this in from the left. And what we're going to do now, you know, you might think, okay, this is a bit wild, but if we bring that exposure up a little bit, we can also move this across. But I only want that to be applied onto Nala, right? I don't want it applied to the rest of the photo over here. I just want it applied onto Nala. So I'm going to come up to mask two. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go intersect mask with select subject. And what that's going to do is take that gradient that we've just made and then only apply it where it also intersects with where the subject is. So we've got a very sort of natural gradient across her, but only applied to her. So if I press O now, you're going to be able to see that this gradient is now only applied onto where Nala is. If I mouse over it, you can see that's the entire gradient. If I come off it, you can see, but now only where it intersects with her. Now I can still move this around. No problem. Right? I can still, I can still have that apply only to Nala, but now it's kind of over here. I could do this. And you can see, look at how, but this is a powerful, powerful tool because it's a very natural way of brightening one side of her. We could have used a brush to do it. We could have gone in and done that, no problem. But I really like a technique like this. We could also do something like a radial gradient, draw a similar sort of thing. So we get a nice gradient going over her there. Let's bring that exposure up. But I only want it to be applied to her. So right click, intersect mask with, select subject. And now it's only applied onto Nala. And if I turn that off, you can see we're only affecting her. Now, two masks in this situation is too much, so we're going to delete mask three, but that's a really useful way of doing things. Let's do a similar sort of thing there with the sky. So let's go ahead and do a linear gradient. We'll bring this down from the top. We're going to do something like this. I like to darken the top of the sky a little bit. It just gives an interesting sort of feel to the photo. So we're going to go do something like that, right? But it's also affecting Nala again. We don't want that. So we're going to go up to mask three, right click, intersect mask with, select sky and now it's only going to apply that linear gradient where there is also sky right so if you look at that now if i turn this off click and then click it on look at the difference right it's now only affecting the sky behind nala fantastic it's such a useful tool and i use this all the time it is it is so handy it is so handy Something else I like to do, maybe we'll go linear gradient. We're going to bring that up from the bottom. Let's bring that exposure down a little bit. Just darken that because now we're just drawing the viewer's eye specifically to Nala there, which I really like to do. Now we've got four masks. If I turn them all off up here, that's what it looked like before we started using masks. And this is what it looks like now that we've added in some masks. Now we've not done loads of crazy stuff, but we really have drawn the viewer's eye to Nala. We've really focused the viewer's eye where we want it to go. It's a super powerful technique. It's, it's so useful. To be honest with you, I don't know how I would edit photos without masks now. I use them all of the time. And that's not even the end. Let's look at one more photo. I'm going to show you how useful this can be for portraits. Okay, we've got a portrait here of me. And this has been edited in a more kind of significant way. So if I go over to the masking panel, you can see I've already got masks here. I can turn those off. And then back on, I've sort of played around a little bit with the light. So we've got one mask that's sort of brightening up around where my face is, another mask that's darkening the edges a little bit, giving us a bit of a vignette, and then another mask, which is a linear gradient, almost kind of accentuating that sunlight coming in from the right. I'm going to show you how unbelievably powerful masking can be in Lightroom for portraits. So let's go ahead and create a new mask. Let's select people on this one. We're going to go ahead and actually look at how useful this can be. Lightroom's going to work out how many people are in the scene and then list them here. So here, obviously, we've just got the one person, but if there were more than one, you'd see them actually show up here. So we're going to go ahead and mouse over person one, and you can see it completely masks me out there. So let's click that. And now we've got loads of different ways to mask out areas of me. So facial skin, 
You can see it's showing in red where it would mask body skin, eyebrows, eye sclera. That's the whites of the eyes, right? That's not how you say it, is it? I don't know. I've messed that up. It's fine. Iris and pupil, lips, teeth, hair, facial hair, clothes. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this photo is because I'm not facing the camera, right? And you might think, okay, this works obviously, but it needs to be face on. But that's not the case. It is working out the iris and pupils, even though they're facing off to the side, even though we've got kind of depth of field stuff going on here. It's really, really clever. I'm a huge fan. So for example, if we want to go, let's say iris and pupils and maybe eye sclera, for example, maybe facial skin as well, right? We could then come down and click create mask and it'll create one mask for all of that. Or we can create three separate masks for all of those different things. So let's click that on and click create mask here. So, okay, fantastic. Now we've got the different areas masked out as three different masks, which means there's lots of things we can do. Now this is fantastic for lots of reasons. Let's go ahead and look at the whites of the eyes, for example. Let's you know, bring that exposure up. That looks crazy, but you can see how that could be really useful. Same with the iris. This photo possibly isn't going to be as useful, but you can add all kinds of interesting things to that. And that's something you might mask out naturally with a brush, but Lyra's just going to do it for you. And what I think is really cool is the facial skin. Great. We can come down and actually maybe reduce the clarity if you want to soften that up a little bit. That's just going to help with any blemishes, just going to help soften that skin, make it look a little bit nicer. All good without going crazy. And that took seconds. I mean, really, that took seconds to do. Clothes, if you want to emphasize the clothes, there's so many useful applications for doing this, no matter what kind of portrait you're looking at. And if you just want to do the entire subject, well, you just come up here, create a new mask, select subject. Fantastic. There we go. Perfect. And I will say it gets it so right pretty much all of the time. I could then just increase the exposure of just the full subject, maybe bump that up a little bit, maybe increase the contrast, whatever it is you want to do. It's super easy in Lightroom. Now we've mostly been looking at exposure, but you can also go ahead and create a new ask. Let's go brush here, for example. And what I wanna do is actually just brush in around the t-shirt. Actually, do you know what? I don't want the arm. So I'm gonna hold Alt on the keyboard and I'm actually gonna just brush off the skin and the wood, right? I just, I just want the t-shirt. Now I could have done this by using the select people and just go for select clothing. But I've done it with a brush, that's fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and change some of the colors. There's a few ways we can do this. We could affect the color temperature, we can affect the hue, we can do things like that, right? Let's double click to reset that. But what I wanna do is specifically affect the kind of orange, kind of salmon-y color that we've got on the t-shirts. So let's go ahead and use sample point color. Let's pick that color there. And then within point color, I can now change that in quite a significant way. And it's changing the whole, the whole t-shirt in a big way, right? Let's say I want it to be pink. Let's say I want to darken that down a little bit. And maybe I want to bring the saturation down. I want a nice, look at that. Lovely. Right. I really like that actually. Okay. So the reason that I've done that where I've used a mask rather than just doing that normally is because if I was incorporating the skin as well, or the wood. As you can see, when I just add that to the mask by brushing on, we're now affecting those colors as well because it's the same sort of shade. It's the same sort of hue, the orange, right? So it's gonna affect the skin tone. So I press Control Z to undo that. So being able to mask that in is super powerful because now we can affect the color of anything in the photo. And even if something else is the same color, we can mask it out so that we're only affecting the very specific thing we want to affect. We can basically change the color of anything in a really useful, and look how quick that was. Well, and that wasn't even the most effective way to do it. Like I say, select people and then go for the clothing. So not only are we able to affect things like exposure, the light, all that stuff, we can affect color, we can really affect anything, and it's so easy to do it. Hopefully that gives you a good overview of how important I think masking is to editing in general how powerful it is and how much you can do with it, no matter the genre that you want to shoot, no matter what you're editing. Like I said, I use this on pretty much every single photo. Really, even if it's a quick edit, right? Even if it's a quick shoot, quick edit, send it off. I'm going to use masks because they just, they take a photo right 
up to fantastic from kind of good immediately just a lot lot better it's a very exciting thing to use i couldn't imagine editing without it so i'd love to know do you use masks in your editing is this something you want to get into let me know down in the comments because it's always super interesting of course there'll be a bunch of links to different equipment we use for these photos this video down in the description as well don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new content all the time let me know as well if there's something specific you'd like to see in a future tutorial tuesday otherwise i will see you in the next video but until then as always thanks for watching